The Battle of the Little Bighorn in June 1876 was the worst defeat ever suffered by the white man in his long fight with the Indian. The news of this disaster had repercussions in Dodge City and other frontier towns. Custer's bitter critics were a handful of civilians who worked for the Indian Bureau. The hoodlum element had an old score to settle with the army, for it was the army which tried to stop them from cheating their Indian wards. Business as usual, Mr. Tom. Maybe this hick cow town ain't even heard about the licking Custer took. Newspapers have been making excuses. Now you fellas circulate around. Let's get the truth told our way. Yes, sir. Come on, you men. Let's start with this Long Branch Saloon. Gus, I'm sick and tired of hearing all this gossip about what happened to Custer in Montana. You men weren't there and you don't know what happened. The next time there's any raw hide in the soldiers, I'm going to close every place below the line. You understand that? I'll pass the word. Shall I take these brave warriors in for packing guns? No. Because I think they're real anxious to go after certain bull. Now, your name is Johnson. You're a cheap peddler. You work for an Indian agent by the name of Tom Elridge. Is he in town? At the Dodge Hotel. And you better not be showing... Elledge is a swindler and a thief. I don't want him spreading lies about brave men. You tell him I said so. You're messing in something too big for a cow town marshal. Mr. Tom, make you pull in your horns. What's behind all this? Well, there are a lot of Indian agents that don't like the army. Captain Benteen chased Elledge out of two jobs for swindling the Indians, try to get him fired. So Elledge wants to get even with the captain, huh? Hmm? How do you think he's going to do that? Well, maybe Elledge will tell me. You take that on back to the office and ask the other deputies to start a patrol. Captain Benteen has been a good friend of ours. Why don't we run Elledge out of town? No, not yet. Johnson's too cocky. I'll go have a little session with Mr. Elledge. And with the public sore at the army over the Custer Massacre, now's the time to hit hard. I've already got six survivors from Major Reno's command ready to testify. They're being held outside of town and under guard. There'll be two Indians, a Mr. Cousin and a Mr. Brother, coming into town. What makes you think two Indians will come into town at a time like this? Because I sent them a message, supposedly from their good friend Wyatt Earp. I watched the North Trace, and remember, I want them alive. You get double that when you bring them in. Who is it? Marshal Earp. Oh, um, just a moment. <clears throat> oh, come in, Marshal. Mr. Elledge? That's right. I just disarmed uh, some of your men. They were picking a fight with a couple of soldiers. Now, maybe you can tell me why. It's only natural, isn't it? Why? Sit down. We resent Custer's failure. It'll make the work of the Indian Bureau twice as hard. We warned the Army. And the Army warned you. Captain Benteen told me before the 7th moved to Fort Lincoln that he was going to file criminal charges against you for what you did to the Indians. He said that? By the time the Court of Inquiry gets through with Benteen, 
I don't think he'll be in any position to make trouble for me. I get it now. You're short in this town, Mr. Ellis. Now you get a hold of your men and move out, you understand? So, uh, that's the way you help a friend in serious trouble. Captain Benteen? My men have picked up deserters from Major Reno's command. And they're ready to charge Benteen and Reno with disobeying orders, stupidity, cowardice. <laughs> I can break your friend. Get him kicked out of the army. Well, I, uh, I wouldn't want to see my friend get kicked out of the army. I usually don't make deals, Mr. Elledge. You've probably heard that. But in case somebody else holds the trump card, you, uh, you might, eh? What's your deal? My men are looking for two Cheyenne, Mr. Cousin and a Mr. Brother. Yeah, I know them. They weren't in the fight, but they know Two Moon and Brave Bear. So? It's important to have testimony from the Indian side. Now, we can pick up cousin and brother, but uh, getting them to talk is something else again. Can you help us? I might if it would help uh, Captain Benteen. He's small fry. We're after Sherman and Sheridan. We're going to prove to Congress that the Army must manage the whole campaign. Now, you help us do that, and... Uh, It'll change things for Benteen. All right. When you bring in Mr. Cousin and Mr. Brother, I'll talk to them. But your men should be real gentle. Oh, I, uh... I don't antagonize witnesses, Mr. Herb. You be sure of that. Because for every mark on them, I'm gonna put two marks on you. Mm -hmm. I just set the patrol, Wyatt. Did you talk to Elledge? Yeah, just now. He thinks I'm on his side. That's the way we've got to play it. Uh, you go find Johnson. I want to talk to him. Johnson? That's right, right away. I'll let him see you. Just come tell me where he is. I'll be over in the office. Thank you, sir. I'll win again. Johnson, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Alone. I just had a nice little talk with your boss. You know, I was wrong about him. I don't like you. I think you know that. But as an officer of the law, I do an awful lot of business with people I don't like. I find that Mr. Elledge is on a special assignment. Just so happens I agree with his views. He told me about the soldiers, about the witnesses. You mean the men That's from... That's right. Major Reno's battalion. He told me that you knew where to find them, that I should ask you. That means we're all working together? That's right. Good. I'll send Mr. Masterson over. You can give him the information. <laughs> Marshal Herb, I'm Mrs. Benteen. Well, howdy, man. Howdy, Captain. I, uh, I used to know the Captain. He's angry because I made him come to see you. <clears throat> Where can we talk? Take the side street to the back door of the jail. I'll join you there. Get up. And everyone knows that Fred was the hero of that fight. He saved Major Reno from being wiped out. But just because he technically disobeyed an order, he wants to sulk in his tent and let them court-martial him. Do you think that's sensible on his part? No, ma'am. I did disobey the order. I've got to tell him so. But you saved Reno. You couldn't have saved General Custer, even if you tried to join him. 
The court will blame me. Oh, but... Excuse me, ma'am. I've read the papers, and they tell it that Custer attacked 5,000 Indians with only 600 men. Isn't that the main reason you got beaten, Captain? Well, yes. They were all too brave. But the public doesn't think about that. They want some officers to punish. Reno and me. Not you. The only one that's after you is that crook Tom Elledge. He's with the Indian Bureau. Fred caught him selling supplies that had been bought for the Cheyennes and tried to get him fired. Now, Reno. Wait. Let me tell Mr. Earp the rest of it. Elledge is supposed to be right here in Dodge City. Yes, he is here. I'm glad you both came. You see, I knew Mr. Earp could help us. I don't see how. Well, the captain's tired, ma'am. He isn't thinking straight. That was a real good fight you put up on Reno Hill, sir. I should have let Reno save himself and gone down the valley to help Custer. All right, sir. All right. Mrs. Benteen, I'll take you on over to the Kansas Hotel, but I, I think you ought to register under a different name. I'm going to ask the captain to stay here in my office for a few hours. Elledge is busy collecting eyewitnesses, and I'll be busy recollecting them. I consider it a personal favor if you'd stay All here. All right. For... Go ahead. You and the missus. I guess I saw too many Indians. <laughs> Knock him off the horse. Aim carefully. Don't kill him. You're not going to turn them loose so they can ride on a dodge, are you? I need doctoring. Well, they'll squawk to Elledge. I can't help that. We'll get the soldiers before Elledge can take a hand. Get on your horses. Come on. All right, now get out of here. How come you started down this way, Mr. Cousin? Indian agent says you want to make talk with us. Yeah, well, I do, but first we got to pick up some soldiers. Got any objection to helping the 7th Cavalry? You he have here, Long Nye 7th Cavalry? No. We help. They are brave men. Good. Better get started. We still got 10 miles of that camp. Yeah. Go get the rest of the horses. <laughs> Campfire. We're getting pretty close. All right, let's take them all on foot. Tie up the horses over there. Alex said he was holding six soldiers. He can't have more than. Half a dozen guards out here. I'll go in from four sides. Take the guards, but don't shoot unless you have to. All right, let's go. Tie him up. Take their sidearms. We'll pick up that man I wounded by the tree. Bring him in. 
All the other guards accounted for? Yeah, we each got one. Good. They won't be standing guard over any other camp. All right, walk these men over there and sit them down. Nee, nee. I'm Wyatt Earp, United States Marshal. That's so. You Sergeant Malloy, D Troop, Major Reno's battalion? I'm John Smith. He's Joe Smith. We're all named Smith. You're a bunch of stragglers. You could be charged with desertion. But that's going to be up to Captain Benteen. Captain Benteen of H Troop? He's dead. No, he isn't. You sure? Yep. Why, that bullet-eating old buzzard. Benteen made it. Last time we saw him, he was on the hill yelling orders at Major Reno. Where were you men? We wasn't running, mister. About a thousand Sioux had us pinned down in the bushes by the river. Show him what they gave us to fight with. Watch it. It's not loaded. An old Springfield with a cartridge extractor is busted. You got a good Winchester. 500 of them, and it might have been different. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it might have been. But I haven't got time to refight the battle with you, Sergeant. I just want to know why you made a deal with a crook like Elledge. And we knew it was the worst messed up battle any soldiers ever had to try and live through. So when Crazy Horse and about 5,000 Indians made their march past the hill, what was the use of staying? We were whipped to a frazzle. So you retreated south, huh? I'm tired of lying, mister. We run south. The fight was over and none of us knew what to do about it. And how did Elledge find you? You won't believe this, but we just run onto him on the trail in Nebraska. He was out hunting for troopers like us. So he offered you money and political influence so you wouldn't be charged with desertion, huh? What were you supposed to do in return? Well... You better tell me, Sergeant. Well, we were supposed to swear an oath, blaming it all on the officers. Especially Captain Benteen? Well, yes, sir. How do you feel about that now, Sergeant? Like a skunk. Captain Benteen was the best officer on the field. He's probably got the soldiers, too. That drunken fool, Johnson. Have the rest of my traders come in yet? About 20 of them, Mr. Tom. Stay here. I'll round them up myself. Hell is mine. Nellidge is waiting for the Indian Bureau Commissioner. But I've got all the witnesses he was going to use against you. Well, technically, Sergeant Malloy and his men are deserters, but the truth is that Elledge was holding them against their will and was trying to bribe them into lying about you. Well, it's up to you now, Captain. Well, Fred. Uh, yes, my dear? Well, all you have to do is take those men to Fort Dodge. They'll tell the truth and... Well, don't you see? Reno's men. I can imagine what they'll say. Oh, Mr. Earp, you're his friend. A wonderful friend. Can't you... Excuse me. Sergeant Malloy, come on in here, will you please? Sergeant Malloy, D-Troop, sir. I'm glad to see you alive, Captain. If it hadn't been for you, the rest of the boys and me wouldn't have made it. I disobeyed an order, Sergeant. Well, who didn't, sir? With 5,000 Sioux and Cheyenne overrunning us? What was an order? Mr. Cousin? Captain Benteen, this is my friend, Mr. Cousin. He talked to several chiefs after the fight. Mr. Cousin, did Two Moon or Brave Bear think there was any way of reinforcing General Custer? No. The Sioux would have killed all soldiers crossing the valley. Gall and Rain and Face had General Custer surrounded. He's right, Captain. The white soldier, brave and proud. Indian proud also. But in war, no chief take blame for defeat. All Indian people take blame. We're all to blame, Captain. Yes, all of us. Cheap politicians scattering the army in dozens of little forts. Bad food, poor guns. Now, now. Sergeant Malloy. Yes, sir. You and your men have reported to me at the earliest possible date. Thank you very much, sir. We will ride to Fort Dodge. I've already filed my report, but you and your men will be asked to make written statements. 
If you're required to mention me, I shall expect you to refer to me as a bad-tempered old buzzard. Is that understood? Yes, sir. You checking the arsenal, Wyatt? You forget, Mr. Elledge, he can't afford to let Malloy get to the fort. You think he'd try to stop us? Well, one of my deputies says he left Dodge with a bunch of white traitors, and you know what that means. Not more fighting. Well, this may be the last battle, man. You know, I think one of the main reasons we take such a licking is that we spend too much time fighting among ourselves. Elledge and his men in there. I think they see you. I expect you to go after him. Well, Captain, what do you think? Well, I can't take soldiers into a fight with civilians. But uh, if a fight starts, we can always ride to the rescue. All right, we'll start it, and uh, you can rescue us. When the shooting starts, we'll come in from the right or the left. Fine. Pantine and the soldiers. They'll all come in, Mr. Tom. And they'll all get what Custer got. You can't hold out here. You sure the captain's men ain't gunshot? I don't know. Can we shoot? No, wait. Now? Now. Fire! That's what Ellie Jane it. Halt! Surrender! Drop your weapons! Bring them down here, men! Yes, sir. Didn't I see you and Mike shooting at two horsemen on the ridge? Yes, sir. Where are they now? They're casualties, sir. Ma'am, the name of Elledge and a pal of his. Wounded? Dead, sir. Well, I wonder how the government will take the news. Well, bring in the bodies. Uh, we'll take care of that, Captain. Uh, Mr. Masterson and I killed Elledge in uh, line of duty. I fired the fatal shot, sir. Thank you. Prepare to mount. Tell Mrs. Benteen that we'll probably be put under arrest at the fort. I don't think so, Captain. If anybody comes out of that court of inquiry with honor, you'll be the man. You deserve a better friend, Wyatt. Troop! Well, he 
cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. 